Calathias, Philodendrons, and Hoyas. Oh my. Hello, plant community. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Pam, and today I have a plant haul for you. Um, I'm sharing with you guys uh, the plants that I actually acquired for the month of March. So let's just get into it because it's a pretty good amount that I actually have and I can't wait to share with you. So I'm not really doing it in any particular order, but I do want to show you this first big baby because this is one of the biggest ones out of uh, my collection or at least the newly added um, members of my collection. And it's so big that I couldn't even actually show you guys here. I have to post it on an actual uh, picture for you guys. And that is the Anthurium Big Red Bird. And as you can see, guys, for obvious reasons, emphasis on the big. Um, as I've told you before, if you've been watching me for some time, um, the big box stores in my area do not have plants that I would want to acquire or don't really have that much of a variety of plants. So the majority of the plants that I do buy happen to be online. So having said that, you guys, listen, I did not expect um, this plant to be as full and as lush as it was. The photo that I saw online, it honestly did not do this plant any justice. I love the shape of the leaves. The root system is so robust. Um, and as you can see, it has the green mixed with that hint of the dark red and I just love it and I hope that it thrives um, under my conditions. I got this plant, if I'm uh, not mistaken, like the beginning of March. So it is acclimating to my environment. Um, the lower leaves, of course, when you do have a plant that's trying to acclimate in your environment, sometimes the leaves can turn yellow and fall off. And that's what I've been experiencing a little bit with this plant. So I hope it's um, starting to get adjusted to my plant. Um, it seemed easy care. I love it. And I have it sitting in my um, dining room as receiving some um, bright and direct light. I hope it loves that. And I can't wait to see um, that it either stays that size or thrive even more. But yeah, so that's um, the Anthurium Big Red Bird, you guys. Now, my next plant that I want to share with you. Oh, let's see. Would be actually my Hoya Hindu rope. I couldn't believe it, you guys. I wish I could find a bigger specimen, but like I said, I got this plant actually online. And I'm just glad to have it. I love the texture of the leaves. I'm really a sucker for Hoya in any form of different shapes and uh, textures. And um, even the Bay Nation of the Hoya is very uh, attractive to me. Uh, but yeah, I've been wanting this plant for a while. I'm so glad that I got it. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I have it in my sunroom. It's getting bright in direct light um, from my west facing window as well as my south west facing window. And it seems to like it so far so good. Um, they say that this particular plant is a slow grower. Um, so, you know, we'll test that theory out um, this growing season and see if I get any extra growth um, before the growing season ends, but I'm excited to have this beauty as part of my collection. So my next one, uh, now I gotta say, you guys, I'm about to show you three plants. Now I know that I said that um, my big box stores do not have like variety of plants. They really do not. Um, but that does not stop me from checking bi-weekly or once a month at my Lowe's or Home Depot just to see uh, if they happen to have any plants. And considering that we were entering the growing season, I said, why not? And this one particular trip that I did in the beginning of, of the month, I want to say at Lowe's and Home Depot, I came across some plants that I really kind of wanted in my collection. And if not really wanted as far as being on my wish list, but I did want to have it in my collection and perhaps try growing it out and see what happens. And my first one that I actually want to show, I want to say I got this one from Lowe's, but I really can't remember. It was either Lowe's or Home Depot, but this Calathea species. Now you guys, help me out here with this. I want to say that this plant might be the... Um, 
Lathy is a Brina. I'm not 100% sure. So if anybody actually knows the actual variety of this particular um, type of Calathea, please comment below. And I'm guessing that it is the Zabrina, but I'm not 100% sure because um, usually, well for me, when I've seen any type of Zabrinas being advertised, the pattern on this leaf, it does look like this, but the back is usually like that uh, maroon purplish color that um, Arantas and uh, prayer plants are known to have. Uh, but I'm like I said, I'm not 100% sure, but it's still beautiful nonetheless. And I just love the uh, pattern of the green leaves. And it's a very silvery feel to it, like a satin matte-like feel. Like It's hard for me to describe, but it's very soft. And I just, I just love feeling it. Um, and as you can see, it has new growth. Um, so far since I've had it, this will probably be the, like the third leaf that's been grown and unfurled. And I have it actually sitting, it was sitting actually in my um, sunroom, but I don't think it could handle the intensity of my heater that I have in here, you guys. Um, so I kind of like pulled it out. I might bring it back in here when I no longer have to leave the heat on in this room. Um and just let it thrive but i have it right now growing inside my home and it's like sitting like on a lower level of um my floors receiving light from my sansy light and it seems to love it but isn't she full she's so full and lush and i believe i only paid like 9.98 for this so that's why i said you know i'm a little uh hesitant as far as calatheas are concerned i said because i've had some disastrous experience in the past with my calatheas but i said for 10 bucks why not just give it a shout and try it out now it does have a little bit of crispiness of the leaves um not as much crispiness because i do believe um for me just sitting out my water overnight that it does help get out some of the um chemicals that does damage um, these particular plants, but it seems to love it, and I, I'm, I'm glad I have it as part of my collection. Now, my other plant that I'm about to show you guys is one that I really did want, but I every time I went to one of those big box stores, they would have it in a small four-inch pot, so to speak, so I didn't really want that. I really wanted something a little bit big, and I happened to luck up on this one um, at Lowe's, and it was the only one left, you guys. And this is my coffee plant. Look at this. It was the only one left. And I couldn't believe it because it was on sale. They had it for like, this was like $8 or something like that. And I was like, what? And I was skeptical because I was like, okay, first of all, it was $8 at one. Two, it was um, for this size. Two, it was um, the only one. So, you know, I'm looking at the root system. I'm actually checking the soil to make sure this plant wasn't sick or, you know, damaged in some kind of way. And it, I didn't see anything wrong with it. And I just, like I said, I wanted one in my collection. I haven't seen one quite as big as this. Um, so I had to get it, you guys. This plant is beautiful. I have it sitting on my window ledge in my kitchen. It's receiving that morning light. Um, I do notice that this particular plant, it is a little bit thirstier than my other plants, I would say, and it requires me to water it a little bit more. It is very communicative to let you know when it does need water um, because the leaves will droop it. If you look at the leaves now, I'm not quite sure if you would even notice it because this is my first time introducing this to you, but if you happen to be one of uh, an owner of this particular plant, you may see what I'm speaking of. Right now, um, the, the plant needs a little bit of water, and I'll probably water it after um, this video but um, I can just tell because the leaves are kind of droopy but I just love the green foliage on this plant I love the, the rippling of the leaves and look at that growth you guys you just can't beat it and for eight or nine bucks that's a steal so my last plant which I got from a big box store that I locked up on and I actually this is one of my wish list plants and this was the um the ZZ Zenzi. They had this, I think it was like 1098 or something like that. And I just saw it and I was like, I couldn't believe it, you guys, because like I said, we don't have good varieties here. So if I have an opportunity to actually come up on this, I'm like, what? And it's just so beautiful. I have my regular ZZ and my Raven ZZ plant. And 
and um, they grow well for me under my care and a very easy care plant. So I really wanted to add this one to my collection because I think it's just so cute with its thick stalks and it's compact. And the petioles is, I love thick leaves and um, I like how the new leaves come in when they sprout and open up and they're just a light green and then it turns into eventually the dark color that you see before you came in this cute little pot. I think it was like $10.98 or $9.98, I'm not 100% sure, but I figured this was a good deal. Um, and it's been growing well in my collection. Now, let's see. My other plant. I got this plant, you guys, because I actually had this plant that I'm about to show you in my collection at one time. Um, and the plant that I had before the one I'm about to show you was actually a little bit bigger than this one. Um, but something happened with the plant, you guys. I really don't know what happened. I don't know if it had some kind of fungal disease, some kind of something was going on where the plant was just declining no matter what I did. It was not um, helping the plant. Um, and I don't think it was anything with my watering or anything like that. Or I don't think it had anything to do with lighting. I just think that when I got the plant, as we do sometimes, sometimes the plants we pick up or get just may not be healthy when they enter our homes. And I think that was the case with that plant. And I just wound up getting rid of it because I was just too afraid that whatever was going on with that plant may actually um, spread amongst uh, my collection and I couldn't have that. So, but I'm glad that I was able to get another one, which is uh, the Philodendron Jungle Boogie. This one is a good size. It's just not as big as the one I had, but hopefully, um, I, I potted it already, excuse me, in this um, terracotta pot and I do have it sitting in my sunroom. So it's getting, I think, ample conditions um, for this variety and I hope that it will thrive but I really love the jungle boogie um, because of the shape of the leaves you guys I just love that jig jag zigzag pattern that it has and the length of the leaves now you guys speaking of this plant if I could get the ring of fire oh gosh if I could get the ring of fire that would just be like the cherry on top you guys but I gotta wait for that price to come down I've been searching and searching and um it's pricey it's a little bit too high in my price range um more than I'm willing to spend on a plant so I may have to wait for a while and I'm patient in regards to trying to like uh save some money so I'll just wait but nonetheless the star of the show for today is just the regular jungle boogie and I love it. It loves to dry out. Philodendron plants are very easy. I love them to, to death because you get them in so many different varieties and shapes. Trailing and hanging, climbing, vining, whatever. But um, I love philodendrons. It's like my number one top plants. Now, let's see. Let's see. Now, philodendron. I have this one, I'm so glad. Philodendron Silver Stripe. I've been wanting to get this in my collection for quite some time, especially since I have the Brazil. Um, it, came, it came in a four, so in a four inch pot, but as you can see, the four inch pot is pretty full. I just love that silver streak or that creamy pattern, that line. It's just beautiful. And I'm confident that I will be able to grow it long and full and lush like I have my Brazil. So I'm more than welcome to have this and grateful to have this in my collection. But look at this leaf, you guys. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous. When I saw this, I couldn't resist it. It fit my um, price range as well, so I was glad to acquire this plant. Now my other plant that I got that I want to show you guys is a peperomia. But it's just so beautiful to me. It speaks to me. And this is the uh, peperomia beetle. Look at that. If you look close, I just love 
that like watermelon streak of the leaves, like the white lines or silvery lines that's in there. Um, and the reason why I got this plant, you guys, or the reason why, why do we buy plants, first of all? I buy plants that speak directly to me. It's not because if it's more popular or anything like that. Any plant that I'm falling in love with based upon color, shapes, textures, or even size for that matter, I, whatever a plant speaks to me, it just speaks to me. And this plant really spoke to me. Um, I don't know. When I look at it, I think of something whimsical. I think of terrarium. I think of enchanted forest so to speak and i just love this plant and i actually have this plant sitting um on a shelf in my bedroom that's receiving um a little light and it seems to be doing very well and i just love the way it's growing and i can't wait i'm hopeful that i'll be able to have it trailing real long could you imagine a big specimen of this this is just beautiful you guys if you don't have one, I strongly recommend that you get one because the leaves are very thick in texture, um, kind of similar to the feel of a Peperomia Hope, even though they do look much thinner than um, a Peperomia Hope. And the care is pretty much the same. Just let this baby dry out. It'll let you know that it needs a good drink because the leaves will not feel as thick. But so far, so good. It's been very easy care. My... Um, home and I'm glad that I have it. Now, we're going to go back. Uh, oh no. Yeah. Let me show you this philodendron. I forgot to make a mention. I did get this philodendron, you guys, at one of the big box stores. And this is the philodendron. The, the label of it was Green Princess. It's so full, you guys. I'm just a sucker for, like I said, foliage colors. Now, majority of our plants are in green color, but I just love this richness of the green with that light green streak that's going down the middle of the leaf. And you guys, the leaf is really thick. You can tell by looking at it that the leaf is thick, but it feels like leathery, like it's, it's, it's just so thick. And look how full it is. And it came with this cute um, bamboo uh, planter. Just couldn't beat it. Green Princess. And I have it actually sitting. It's sitting far away, like in a, one of my darker corners of my home. It is getting light, but it's um, not bright. It would be more like damp light that it's receiving. But as you can see, look at that. It's very full. It's very healthy. I really haven't had any problems. I just wait for the soil to completely dry out before I give it a nice good drink. I really even, it, actually, I'm about to take that back. I'm just seeing one of the small leaves that's kind of yellow. I can't really show it to you guys. Maybe I can. You see that leaf right there? But outside that tiny leaf that's turning color, this, this plant really hasn't been giving me any issues, and I have, um, one leaf did open up, but there is new growth trying to come out, like, right here, and then one, like, right there. But, yeah, $20 for this, and it's a philodendron. How can you go wrong? And it's so full and so lush and so beautiful. I mean, look at it. Beautiful. Now, my next plant that I'm going to share with you guys. And let me, oh, this one. Now, I've already probably shared this plant with you guys if you've been watching my um, series. And I want to say this plant is under one of my series that I listed as an underrated plant. If you haven't checked that video out, you guys, check it out. I, I share some beautiful plants that I feel as not being talked about in the plant community, but definitely deserve the spotlight. Now, this plant right here, uh, in that series, I did make a mention that I wouldn't mind getting another plant to 
combined it and make it fuller. And I happened to luck up on um, finding another um, small plant in a four inch pot and I just combined it. And this is the mandarin orange spider plant. If I, could find, if I can find a technical name, botanical name, I probably would put it on the screen somewhere, but if not, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is the mandarin orange spider plant, and I mean, guys, seriously though, look at that. The orange in this plant reminds me of sherbet. <laughs> like the ice cream or whatever <laughs> and I don't know I just it's just so beautiful I just love the orange of the petioles of stems going into the veination of the plant and then I just love the way that it hangs I have it sitting on one of my plant shelves in my dining room where it's receiving some morning sun dampled morning sun from my East facing window and is receiving some sun or lights from my Sansy light and it tends to love it. This plant does not like to completely dry out, you guys. If it dries out, um, if you let it dry out too long or completely, sometimes you will get the crispiness of the leaves. But outside of that, for the most part, it's been very easy care. Um, this right here, I'm not sure, this little black thing, it's not really specked. Oh, it's not even alive, but they have little like shoots, um, and I guess over time they fall off like flowers. It's nothing spectacular, but if it, if it happens to do it again this growing season, I will definitely share it with you guys. If I don't bring it here, I'll definitely put it on my um, Instagram. So if you guys haven't followed me there, please follow me there if you can. Um, I share a lot of more um, more information there as well. Now, let's see. Let's see. I think I got two more plants that I want to show you. And this one, you guys, is my skin dapsis. Silvery Ann. Now, it's a small specimen. So, I'm going to have to wait until it really start growing for me to actually get that silver tips that you normally see with silver. Silvery Ann's, but I love skin dapsis. I'm a skin dapsis lover. Um, I have his sister or cousin, um, the Argerius, which this plant kind of looks similar to the um, skin dapsis pixis Argerius. Um, the difference is just it's more silver with the tips on the silver ant. Very easy care. I have it hanging in my. Um, wall here behind me in my sunroom where it's getting um some kind of bright indirect light i know these plants can tend to grow fast um it's very communicative to let you know when it does need water because the leaves will look like this leaf right here you guys see how it's just curled all skin dapses for the most part they will curl like this to let you know that hey i need some water um but I may just wait a day or two before I actually water this because it's just this leaf and the soil still feels not completely dry. So, yeah. So don't just use the curling of the leaves as your go-to for water. And stick your finger in there. The index, do the knuckle test like I told you. And stick your finger in there, deep down in there, and feel the soil. And then you make a judgment from that. If you don't trust your fingers, please, and I encourage you to use your moisture meter until you become more comfortable and know your plants. Okay? But this plant is gorgeous, you guys. Just look at that. And this is one of the newest leaves that's just starting to unfurl. And I have a new growth pattern right here and right here. So I know that with this growing season, this plant is definitely going to explode in growth. And I'm glad I have it in my collection. One of my wish list plants, by the way. So my last plant that I'm going to share with you guys is also a wish list plant of mine that I've been wanting. And thank goodness the price happened to come down to my um, category where I said, okay, I can buy it. And that is this Philodendron Painted Lady. I love her. I 
love her because of I love the shape of the leaves. I'm a sucker for her philodendrons. That's one. Two, the shape of the leaves you just can't beat. And look at this, just that speckling. The speckles of that light green. Um, and then if you take a quick look, the outer edges of it have like a little pink tinge. Not to mention the pink stems. And I mean, I can't even look at that. Mm. Oh, beautiful. And it's trying to grow a leaf right here. I have it sitting on one of my tables and it's getting light from my CNC light. And it tends to love it. Um, very easy care. I'm not sure, you guys. I'm thinking about, but I'm going to wait for it to grow some more in height. But I'm actually thinking about... Um, my goal is to probably chop it, chop it and prop it and um, propagate her and see what this beauty can do. But this lady right here is beautiful, you guys. So, yeah. So, that ends it for my plant haul for the month of March. Um, comment below, you guys. Let me know if you have any of these plants, um, how long you've had it in your collection. Are they thriving under your conditions? Um, let's share. Let's have an open dialogue. Because as I mentioned to you guys before, um, this channel is not just for me, but it's for all of you guys. And I would be more happy and appreciative if we get a conversation going and we can just um, learn together and grow this plant community together. So that wraps it up. And keep in mind, you guys, if you love foliage as much as I do and you love listening to planty things, you know what to do. Subscribe to this channel. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down. Any support you guys can give me, I will much appreciate it. And enjoy your day wherever you are in the world, you guys. And until next time, much love. Bye.